this week that we have decided to suspend coffee hour for at least the month of January. With the new Omicron variant and the way it's contagious, we felt it was better to be safe than sorry. So you're welcome to socialize. We encourage social distancing, mask wearing. Um, we just won't have drinks available for at least the month of January. And I want you to know too that Every month at our session meeting, we set aside time to reconsider our COVID protocols. This is something that we are constantly thinking about and adapting. Um, and so if you ever have questions or concerns about any part of that, please do let me know. I also want to give you a small update on the A family, the refugee family that we're walking alongside. They continue to adapt well to life in Grand Rapids. They figured out the bus system. They now can get anywhere pretty much they wanna go. They get their own groceries, all of that fun stuff. Um, and they're looking forward to being more and more independent as time goes on. Um, we are also looking for a couple more folks to help us with transportation, especially if you're going to be here through the winter months. Um, so if that's something you would be willing to help with, um, please do come talk to me and we can figure that out. What other announcements do we have this morning? Dennis, come on up. I have a revised list for the Afghan family, and this is a copy with the original document is down in the room where we're collecting the supplies. So uh, if you are interested in making a purchase, consult with that list before you do so. We've already received a number of items, so thank you all for your consideration. Thanks, Dennis. 
Any other announcements? Or did I forget this morning? All right. With that said, let us worship God together. Will you all please join me in the call to worship? Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arise from the world, our darkness does not overcome. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Jesus is the light of the world, and his light is the light, and in his light is our light. Will you all please join me in singing hymn number 150, As With Gladness Men of Old. Come, 
and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On this Epiphany Sunday, we gather once again around the story of Magi visiting young Jesus from the Gospel according to Matthew. We celebrate this day every year because it commemorates the revealing of Emmanuel, God with us, to the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people of the world. These wise people were the first outside of ancient Judea to recognize that something world-changing was happening. And that's worth celebrating. So let us listen for the word of the Lord from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Much of our mental image of this moment comes from the songs and nativity scenes that don't always quite match up with the details of the story itself. We Three Kings of Orient are, for example, tell us the story of three kings from the far reaches of East Asia, traveling on camels and each bringing a gift. But Matthew doesn't tell us how many people there were, nor does the text say they were necessarily from Eastern Asia, or that they were kings, or even men at all. From the grammar in the original Greek, we can assume that there were men among them, but given what we know, it's equally as likely that this was a mixed group, likely from ancient Persia, which is now in the general area of Iran. But Magi is more likely to be an astrologer than a king. And there is not a single camel mentioned in Matthew 2. In the same way, our nativity scenes often mix and match the stories from Matthew and Luke and put the Magi and their camels alongside the shepherds and Mary and Joseph. 
and baby Jesus in the manger. But given what happens next, the story of Herod's slaughter of the innocents, it's likely that sweet baby Jesus was more of a rambunctious toddler at this point. It took the Magi a couple years to catch up with this star. They also specifically mention that they find Mary and Jesus in a house, not a stable. Now, I'm not telling you to stop singing the hymns or remove the Magi from your nativity set, but what I want to offer us instead is a new kind of imagination. Those things are the result of centuries of imagination filling in the gaps in this story. And that's fine. But if we can clear a path in all of those mental images for some more imagination, I think we'll find something worth seeing. The Bible takes for granted that the Magi were astrologers from the East not astronomers who simply studied and recorded the movements of the stars and planets, but astrologers, those who assign spiritual meaning to the stars and planets <coughs> and their alignments. It's also not questioned that a new star could appear and that appearance would be properly interpreted by the group of astrologers, and the star would then lead this group of people for years until they found this messiah. Nothing weird about that at all, apparently, in the ancient world. It appears that the only surprising thing in this story is the detour through Jerusalem, which they make due to their mistaken assumption that the Messiah, Savior, King of the Jews, would be found, obviously, in the capital city, in a palace. They go to Herod because, obviously, he would know that this king had been born in his territory, Perhaps they even assumed that it was his own child. They get the information they're looking for from Herod, that the Messiah is to be born in Bethlehem. But they eventually find out via a dream that Herod is not to be trusted because he has his own schemes cooking. This year, when I read this story again with fresh eyes, I found myself a teensy bit jealous of the Magi. A star isn't quite a flashing neon sign that says this way, but it's about as close as we get to one in the New Testament. Because of that star, they knew what they were looking for, which direction to go, how to get there. They knew exactly what to do when they arrived, what gifts they brought. Their task was simple, even if it wasn't easy. We still seek Jesus, just like the Magi, though our journeys are a little bit different. Rather than climbing mountains and crossing deserts, we are sifting through centuries of theology and tradition, looking for ways to connect our souls to the unchanging love of God. Our detours to the halls of power look less like asking Herod for directions and more like hoping that an election will solve all of our problems and a healthy stock portfolio will fulfill all of our deepest longings. We are drowning in information, opinions, and advice, but we are starving for wisdom. We have the world in our pockets and millions of voices shouting at us from every screen and billboard and newspaper ad. But still, we search for the voice of God in our lives, for the star that will bring us to God's presence among us. Sometimes, we're not even entirely sure where exactly we're going. But here's what else I noticed in this story. The Magi are wandering aimlessly, and God is not hiding from them. The star is an invitation and a guide, leading them to find Jesus in the most unlikely of places, where they wouldn't have thought to look otherwise. So as we really dive into 2022 and all that the new year will bring, I'm going to invite us into a new kind of journey a spiritual practice that I hope 
will help us deepen our awareness of God in our everyday lives and God's presence throughout the year, encouraging us to, to find Jesus in unlikely places. This practice is called Star Words. You may have noticed that there is a lovely little table down here, and there are bookmarks laid out on that table all face down. Each bookmark has a word on the other side of it. You don't get to pick your word, so don't flip them all over before you choose one. <laughs> Just pick up a random bookmark, and the word will, like a wand in Harry Potter, choose you. Think of it as the opposite of a New Year's resolution, in which you try to correct some defect in yourself, and receive this instead as a gift to carry with you throughout the year. During the next hymn, I'll invite you to come forward at any time, whenever you're comfortable, pick a word, take it home with you, put it somewhere where you can see it. It might be on your bathroom mirror, on top of the coffee pot, as a bookmark in your Bible or your favorite daily devotional, maybe on your computer monitor. Your star word may not make sense to you at this point. You may not even like it. I've gotten a few star words that I said some not pulpit appropriate words about. <laughs> but watch for it. Reflect on its presence through your life this year. It may break in like an epiphany. It may slink in like a barn cat. But this morning, I prayed over each of these star words that it would find its way to precisely the right person to guide them in the way of Jesus. My hope is that like the star that guided the Magi, this word may guide you this year to a deeper awareness of the presence of God. May it surprise you in the best ways. May you wrestle with it and poke at it, and may it po poke back at you too. Let us sing together. Remember, come up and pick a star word at any point.
God intends to unite all of creation so all my share in the promises of God's reign. Therefore, with gratitude and joy, let us bring our gifts as we pray together. Glory to God. You led three wise people from lands far away to see Jesus. Overjoyed in his presence, they knelt and offered him precious gifts. We too offer our gifts in gratitude, reverence, and thanksgiving. Receive and bless this offering as a joyful sign of a boundless love and abundant life we are called to share in Christ. Amen. How can we pray for one another this morning? David. Knowing that it's coming, and this week Tom Gilson will be undergoing heart surgery this Thursday. Uh, he and Carl were telling me they have to arrive or be there at 5 15 for a 7 o'clock surgery. So it'll start the morning early, or as Carla says, that's not morning. <laughs> For those in the back, um, Tom Jelson has been waiting for a few months now on surgery, and he is scheduled for that this week, so we are grateful for that. Um, he'll be having open heart surgery to replace a valve um, and do a couple of bypasses, um, so he will get to spend some time in the hospital as well, um, and we'll be praying for a smooth surgery and easy recovery. So, thank you, Jason. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, talking on a family Zoom yesterday, we learned that our brother-in-law, Reverend Jay Ayers in Missouri, finds the results of the, his latest uh, kidney scan, and uh, we hope and pray that uh, the results are good. Absolutely. Um, so, um, Dick and Sue's brother-in-law, Jay Ayers, um, who is a pastor in Missouri, yeah. um, is awaiting the results of his latest kidney scan, um, and so requesting prayers that the results are good, um, and as they should be, um, and this has been an issue for him for quite a while, yes? sister-in-law Bert, who we've been praying for for quite a while, um, passed away on December 30th. So they had a private service last week, um, and our love and prayers are with you all as you grieve that loss. Lynn. Our friend the movement, who's in the hospital with COVID, was finally taken out the ventilator this past Thursday, but after a month, more than a month on the ventilator. But now it's on dialysis, kidney dialysis procedure. Okay. Um, so their friend Ruben, whom we've been praying for for a while, um, has been hospitalized with COVID, spent a month on the ventilator, and now is off of the ventilator. So thanks be to God for that. But there was also some kidney damage, and so he is on dialysis for that. Um, so we will continue to pray for his their first grandchild in May. Um, so we thank God for that and pray for all good things. 
for their growing family. David. I believe I'm correct on this. Um, Andy DeWild is here, his wife, Betty, a member or involved in our church. She was in the hospital and then now home under hospital care and certainly just around them with our love and support for this part of the journey of life. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so Betty DeWild um, spent some time in rehab um, and is now home, yes, um, and receiving hospice care. So we will pray for Betty and for Andy um, as they navigate this part of the journey. Thank you. Any others? All right. Let's go to God in prayer together. God of love, we give you thanks and praise for the sunshine, for the safe travels that brought us together this morning. God, we lift up to you all that weighs on our hearts. We lift up especially those who are sick or recovering. God, we pray for Jay as he awaits results of his kidney scan. We pray that these results would be exactly what they want and need to hear so that he may be well. We pray for Reuben. We give you thanks that he is off of the ventilator after a month. We pray for his continued healing as he receives dialysis. Um, and we pray that he would continue to fight off this virus and be well. God, we lift up. Betty, as she is now home, thankfully, and receiving hospice care. God, we pray for her comfort and peace. We pray for strength for her family and friends. Um, and we pray that you would raise up a community of love and support from every side, that they may be loved and loved well. God, we give you thanks for Tom and give you thanks that his surgery is scheduled. God, we pray that nothing would stand in the way of this surgery. We pray that all would go smoothly and well. We pray for wisdom and steady hands for all those who will be involved in the surgery and caring for him. We pray for a quick and smooth recovery. God, we also lift up those who are grieving in a strange, strange season. God, we pray for Kathy and Dennis, for Bert's family and friends, for all those who knew and loved her. God, we lift them up to your care. We pray that you would give them comfort and strength for each new day. God, we also come to you with joy. We give you thanks for Kristen and Justin and their growing family. God, we pray that all would continue to go well um, as they await their new little one in May. God, we give you thanks for the ways you bring new life among us, even in seasons of uncertainty. We lift up all that weighs heavy on our hearts, the joys, the hopes, the longings, knowing that you see us, that you know us, that you love us, and that you are with us. God, we pray that you would help us see your presence every day. And now we join our hearts and our voices together in the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
who's joined me now and in charge. Rooted in Christ's love, we seek to grow in love for God and neighbor. This love is the work of our hearts, to care and be cared for, of our souls, to know and be known, of our minds, to learn and to teach, and our strength, to do justice and to so as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face to you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.